Doing good? All right, all right. Uh, are you guys ready? All right, Sundance, set so and clap from League Ops, you know, the co-founders and one of the guys that's been here since the beginning. They have any questions, or they will be answering any questions you guys have about anything, really. So, and Casey, Casey, our lead game tester, Casey Kramer, and also the tournament director, high five. He's run the Halo tournament and doing this at the same time. He's very talented and pretty. All right, so you guys came up here. Obviously, I, well, I hope you guys have some questions for these guys. Who wants to go first? All right, all the way in the back. Let me pass this microphone to him. Pretty simple one. Uh, I just want to know if you guys are coming to North Carolina next year. Um, we'll see how the rest of this weekend goes, but so far it looks pretty good. We actually, we're, um, we've got an offer from this venue to come back to this very same hotel. So, uh, yeah. I like it. I'm having fun so far. I really like Raleigh. Okay. Um, anybody? Over here? Another question over here? All right. So, uh, if you have a question, that's, remember, that's Casey. Starting from the right to left. That's Casey, Clap, Sepso, and then Sundance. Uh, I just need to know when you guys are coming to Atlanta. If ever. I'm gonna give this one to Adam because I've had about five people come up to me this weekend and say, "Well, why, why Raleigh? Why not Atlanta?" Um, so we used to go to Atlanta, and then we got into a situation where we couldn't find the right venue. It was either too expensive. But one of the big things for us that you guys don't um, realize is we gotta, you know, we gotta book five or six events a year. That makes sense for us in terms of spacing and venue availability is a big issue. Um, Things like, you know, a bunch of 18 year old guys playing video games sounds really easy to find a space for that. Sometimes it's difficult in terms of the cost of the hotel. Um, you know, if it's too expensive, it drives you guys away. We've got a lot of sponsor partners that we need to bring into the venue. Atlanta happens to be a Coca-Cola town, so that makes it a little bit more complicated. But I, I will give you my word, if we are able to find a venue and a date that works for us for Atlanta in the future, ever, we will go back, because we've had great events there, for sure. All right, any, uh, right here, I got your hand up, nice. Uh, this is mostly for uh, KC. So, um, with the reach game testing, I know in Halo 3, uh, a lot of the forges don't feel like you do uh, enough testing on the maps that are forged, so, like you only play like one or two games on them and you just sort of toss them in the garbage bin. So what are you gonna do in reach with the new, uh, the new forge thing to make sure that uh, the best maps get tested a lot and play it? So, yeah, we hired a new guy named Ponytar. He was one of our refs here. <laughs> he, uh, his major role will be the community stuff. So he's gonna make sure that every map gets tested thoroughly. Anything that proved like me and John don't have enough time for, he's gonna focus in and make sure that all that stuff's going good, and he's gonna send us whatever the best stuff is. Also, we got the new map submission system, so um, we'll tell you what we want. You send it in, he goes through every single one, plays as many games necessary, then goes to us, and then we'll fully test it. So yeah, everything should be getting looked at a lot more now. All right, this case, questions for Casey as well. Um, with DC being about two months away or so, are y'all gonna have a uh, playlist up on Reach on Xbox Live when it comes out, or are we gonna have to practice playing custom games? Um, so it's, uh, the game's gonna launch without our playlist in it but it's gonna be the first update, we'll have it in there if we feel like we've had enough time to test. Um, it's really not a, you know, we won't wanna rush and put something in there that doesn't work. So the real, the focus for us is gonna be get Casey and John and everybody else. Um, when, it, you know, when we have two copies of the game, we can't really test it, right? We need it in the hands of the player. So that's gonna start on launch night when you guys all have it. Also, a week after release, uh, Reach is released, we'll have our seven maps for DC, which will be all Slayer and Flag. Um, how well do you think Reach will like integrate into MLG in general? Just like seeing off the gameplay, how much different it is from Halo 3, like do you actually think that it'd be kind of like a popular MLG game like title? I don't know if it's for me, but I think it's gonna be amazing. I agree. Um, so the thing with Reach is that you, with the beta that you played, we, we have had a little bit more exposure to it than, than, than most folks. 
And what we've seen and what we've been told is the level of customization is, is, uh, is absolutely incredible. So we're going to be able to make the game play a lot differently than that it does out of the box and that the, than the beta did. So i I, I got to agree with Casey. I think just as we saw from Halo to Halo 2 and Halo 2 to Halo 3, um, I think Halo Reach is going to be the best version of the game that we've ever had to work with from beginning to end, including you know automatic score reporting through an API they've built for online play, the theater, Forge. Forge is ridiculous. I mean, so customizing um, you know, the, the damage from the various weapons in a way that's more meaningful for us. So uh, I think it's going to be great. And I think a lot of the people who are good at Halo right now are going to continue to be good. So I think you'll see a lot of translation of talent. Um, once Halo Reach is released, how long will it be until it's actually integrated into uh, MLG? Pretty much at launch, you guys are going to have something to, to, you know, we'll be looking for help in testing. Uh, the playlist, again, I said, is going to be a question of how long we were able to get, uh, how long it takes to test. But Casey will have those game types out there going to be used in DC really quickly. So, um, and DC is going to be, we're going to run a, re a full, you know, full board reach event. So how much have you guys looked into the armor abilities and things like that, like jetpack and all that good stuff? A lot. So can we see, oh, is jetpack going to be allowed or armor locking or? Uh, again, that's going to be up to Casey and Lee and all that he mentioned, but the customization that is there for those abilities as well. So what you saw in the beta is just a little bit of what's available, but also how they can operate. So it is a group decision, mostly between me, John Nelson, a couple others, but um, I like the sprint, I like the evade, I like the jetpack. Uh, those are the three that I like the most, but we got to discuss once the game comes out, put as many hours as possible, and then go to the drawing board and see what works, what doesn't work. Also, if a jetpack breaks a map, that's an issue, we got to look at that. I was uh, just wondering why you guys didn't come back to the this year. Uh, right now, we're in 75,000 square feet of space on the carpet, and Meadowlands is 50,000 square feet. So, we don't fit. We are too big for Meadowlands. <laughs> nice. And you guys you guys can ask them any questions you want. It doesn't have to be just about Halo Reach. So, I mean, you can ask Sonny as what kind of shampoo he uses, because he's got lovely hair. What's some of the game types that are going to be in the MLG playlist? <laughs> I haven't had enough time yet. Um, for the first event, I'll just be flag and slayer like we do at all the combines. After that, we gotta look at what's new. And I know they added a lot of options when it comes to game time, and I haven't even been able to touch them yet. So we'll see. Hopefully, bombs fixed. I would like to see that again. So, oh, excuse me. So how did you two goons meet? You know, and start talking about video games. You know, start drinking or something. <laughs> South Carolina. 2010 College World Series National Champs, baby! Woo! Uh, Sundance and I met a long time ago. I think when we, the first time we met, there was video games involved. There was other things, too. Video games, mostly. Uh, and we had worked together before at MLG, so we were kind of kicking it, playing a lot of Halo, and decided to do something with ourselves. And uh, that was the original thought, but it took a while for us to develop into what you see here. All right, guys, just a reminder, when you're asking a question, put your mouth right up in the mic like, yeah. Uh, Sundance, where did you get your awesome shoes? San Diego, California, in the mall was shimmy. I was there, so was Detach. All right. It's true. This one's for Adam, Sonny. Uh, talking about StarCraft, how much went into the planning and how long were you going after that game? And what do you think about the event so far? It's been a three-year pursuit uh, for StarCraft too. Uh, what do you, can you clarify, like, what? How hard did you work to get it on a scale of one to ten? Well, I think uh, Blizzard's very careful with who they let run their titles. And I think over the last three years, we proved with WoW that we're not going to mess it up and we're going to do it right. And uh, just through continued conversations with them, um, they uh, they wanted to work with us on StarCraft, so it's been a great partnership, definitely. How um, huge is StarCraft? It's only the beginning, hopefully it'll be 10 times its size soon. Uh, is there any possibility of 
us seeing years on the pro circuit ever again. Because I know that community was a horrible thing for years two and just seeing if you could like get past that and probably go to years three. The years community wasn't bad at all. Uh, the game just, I mean, there's a lot of spectator issues with, with Gears, obviously. There's a lot of glitches. Um, Casey can speak more to that, but uh, we're always open to the best competitive titles that are out there. It's not like we're married to one, inter like one um, genre or one, you know. I mean, Gears, we uh, we had some successes with it, and uh, again, I, would, I agree with Adam. I wouldn't blame the community for any of the reasons that, well, in terms of why it's gone. Um, although there was some hostility for a little while there, for, which I never understood. The issue with the game is that 90% of what we do happens online. And when a game gets patched in a way where online play is different than LAN play, it makes it nearly impossible to run an event. So hopefully between Gears 2 and Gears 3, Epic changes some of their, you know, the way they approach things a little bit. But honestly, we, we can't say. I mean, I, I'd rather run everything, you know, at the same level and, and get it to a point where it's really polished rather than have something that's off in the corner because we can't really do it the way we want to due to some of the limitations. So we'll see what happens. Um, we talk to developers all the time, but it, it's, I gotta tell you, honestly, it's, it, it's out of our control in terms of how big we would do it if we ever were to do it again. I think the, the bottom line that's really important is um, there's a lot of misconception that uh, other factors other than being the, the best competitive titles available goes into our decision on what's in the circuit. We want the best competition out there. So if, if Gears 3 looks like it's viable, I mean, we'll definitely take a look at it. And that's all I can really say right now. What are you guys' plans to uh, expand internationally? Yeah, we, um, I think we get a lot of our audience, so a lot of people watching the stream right now are from outside the U.S., all over our region in Europe, um, and that's awesome, and I think we have a big fan base all over the place already. In terms of taking the circuit to other countries, we would love to, but it's not um, an immediate thing we want to do, but um, we would absolutely love to make it bigger, be in Europe, be in Asia, uh, and have, you know, be just doing this all the time, be around all over the world. You know, the other thing to keep in mind is that we're not done. What we have here, while this is great, it's amazing, we're on our 50th event, we love it. There's things that we want to get a little further along here as well. So to overextend, it's going to dilute what we do, which we're just not willing to do. So we're not going to rush. It'll happen. Uh, what did you guys do before I you? Who? All of us? All of you. Uh, Mike and I, uh, I worked. Mike actually hired me. I was like the second guy I worked for him at this company they started, and we became partners through that. Before that, I worked in <laughs> I worked in advertising and film. Um, I was a film film student at NYU. I didn't graduate because I realized I needed real world experience, and I became a youth brand consultant. So pretty much, I would work five or six months out of the year, and then try to travel as much as possible before Mike talked me into getting a real job. You should stay in school and graduate. Uh, I heard Sundance before this in my last company. That was, that was what I did before this. And I also talked. I was uh, taking a year off law school and took a job with these guys, and uh, they convinced me to not go to law school. Which... You should go to school and graduate. <laughs> uh, I was a business student, and I worked for a tree company, cutting down logs and doing all that kind of fun stuff, making money. And uh, yeah, and playing Halo 2 in any free moment I had, and then I ended up here being a referee and working my way up. Um, are you planning on bringing COD Black Ops to the pro circuit when that comes out? Um, I'll, I'll know more about the game in, in a week or so, and you know we've been looking at it and looking at what we can do with it. Obviously, Call of Duty is a great game. Treyarch has done a lot of work to try and um, answer some of the issues with the engine that they inherited from Infinity Ward. So, um, well, again, yeah, as Adam said earlier, we look at every game to see what's possible. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential there, but until we actually get our hands on it, we can't answer that. Not being able to run a game on land is a huge issue, so, I mean, 